Welcome Fast Lane Truck viewers to the 12th annual Canadian Truck King Challenge. Now this year we are testing out the half tons and we have the entire field here. All six of the major players and we're going to do what you would do with them. We're going to tow, we're going to haul payload, we're going to go off road and of course we're going to drive them empty and then we're going to pick a winner. Now first let me tell you all about the event. The Canadian Truck King Challenge has been running yearly since 2006 and was started by Howard Elmer. Yes, that is my dad, so needless to say, I have been involved in Truck King since the beginning. The goal of the event has always been to provide truck buyers with feedback from a panel of top Canadian automotive journalists from across the country. And throughout the years, we've had over 20 different judges join us. So what do we test? Well, over the course of two days, each truck is driven on a 19 kilometer loop by every single one of the judges in three different states. Empty, loaded with 1,000 pounds of payload, and then loaded up with a 7,000 pound trailer. But easily the most interesting bit of information that comes out of the Trucking Challenge is the fuel economy study. Now we're gonna put that right in the middle of this video, so make sure you stay tuned. So here's how the scoring works for this event, and I will say one thing real quick, uh, comparing our trucking challenge here to sort of what the guys do down in Denver with Gold Hitch, we are still very much subjective. We bring in five professional automotive journalists, guys who are, have done this for a long time, and guys who test trucks mainly. So you know, we, we really rely on opinions of those different judges. So each judge gets a binder like this, now the binders are separated by the trucks that are in the competition. Now each truck, the first page has a build sheet. So this is the Toyota's build sheet. So you're able to see what the truck is exactly, what the price is, etc., etc. Now this is the more important sheet. This is the actual score sheet. So we score these vehicles on a number of different areas. We have styling, exterior, interior, and overall quality. Then we have on the interior driver position, visibility, room comfort and access, along with connectivity and entertainment features. We get one score all by itself for noise, vibration, and harshness. Now in the performance sector, we rate the throttle response, the engine overall, and the transmission. And then for vehicle dynamics, we have ride, steering, handling, and braking feel. And then that all culminates in what we give our personal subjective value. Now we score from zero to 10. And we do use tenths, so you know, you can do sort of 6.7 if you want to. Um, most judges, myself included, I tend to do 0.5s, but not usually, you know, right down to the tenth. Now the other thing at the end of the sheet is just the main test value. So then you also give an overall score for how it felt with payload, how it felt towing, how it felt empty, and how it felt off-road. And you know, doing it back to back is really important because then I'm able to sit here and say, you know what, the Toyota felt like X on the off-road course and X with payload. And right away, flip over to Chevy and say, well, you know, comparatively, the Chevy felt a little better than the Toyota, so I will give it a little higher score for payload and a little worse off-road, so I'll give it a little lower score for off-road. And that's, again, really the value of this back-to-back -back testing is you're able to score these trucks, you know, right after you've driven them back-to-back, -back, so it gives you a really good sense for how to score the trucks and where to scale them. Now, of course, the other big part of this event is that it's a culmination of opinions. It's not just what I think. Think. It's not just what one judge thinks, it's what all five of us come together to say. run down the competitors here. So we have the 2019 Nissan Titan Pro 4X. Next up, 2019 Chevy Silverado LTZ. Now this truck is fitted with the 6.2 liter V8. 
Moving down the line, we got the 2019 Ford F-150 with the three liter power stroke diesel. This is a Lariat model and it has the FX4 off-road package. Moving on, the second entered from GM. This is of course the 2019 GMC Sierra Denali and because it's Denali, that means that we also get 6.2 liter V8. Now coming up next, kind of the outlier in the group, this is the 2019 Toyota Tundra TRD Pro. And while it is easily the best color out of all of these trucks, it is also the most off-road capable, but it might not be the best at towing, we'll have to wait and see. And then rounding out this crew is this handsome truck right here. That's the 2019 Ram 1500, of course fit with the Hemi 5.7 liter. We don't have any of the e-torque, so this thing is just straight gas powered. And that's all the trucks. Truck King asks each manufacturer for one truck in a specific segment, but each brand is able to choose which truck they send. That's why we have an F-150 diesel versus a TRD Pro versus a Ram Limited. I know these things don't all line up, but each manufacturer gets to send one truck to represent their brand, and this is what they chose to send us. All right, we're back in from our first three truck empty loop. So we did F-150 diesel, TRD Pro, and the Sierra. So there's a lot of trucks here, and I'm gonna talk a lot more about towing and payload. So I'm just gonna give you the quick hits on driving empty. First of all, this diesel, the first thing that stands out is the quietness. Honestly, you barely hear this engine when you're in the truck. Uh, smooth riding truck. The steering to me is still a little bit too light in the F-150. I never totally loved the steering. Um, but the, the quietness of this engine really stands out absolutely. Now next, the TRD Pro, and I already said this, this is sort of the outlier in this group because it's the off-road version of the truck, so it's very floaty. You really kind of lean through the corners. Uh, the on-road ride handling does get a little annoying with how much it leans. And then there's that TRD Pro Performance Exhaust. This thing sounds incredible. The 5.7 sounds so good through this can. But the issue is cruising at highway speeds, it gets a little bit annoying. You know, I wish you could have a baffle in there, turn it on and off. Of course, Toyota doesn't do that. So if you love a loud engine, the TRD Pro is for you for sure. Now, finally, we have the GMC Sierra here. Now, this is a Sierra Denali, so this thing is loaded up, 6.2 liter V8. And almost like that Ford, the thing that stands out is how quiet it is in the cab. There's so little road noise. Even the rain that's coming down today, there's so little rain noise that makes it through to the cab. And then the 6.2 paired with the 10 speed is an incredibly smooth, strong powertrain. So the feeling of luxury you get out of this Denali is really something special. So next up, we're gonna head back out and we're gonna do loops in the other three trucks. Stay tuned. Now, why do you think back-to-back -back truck testing is important? The vehicles are so much alike these days. You have to try them by back to back because you're trying to find that fine line where there's a difference between one and another. Otherwise, I mean, I, if you're blindfolded and I have you ride in these vehicles, you probably will have a hard time differentiating one from the other, except probably for the engine sound. <laughs> All right, we're back from the empty loops on the final three trucks. So let me just walk you through some of the quick hits here. Right behind me, we have the Nissan Titan. Now, when it is empty, the truck is a little bit stiff. Uh, it definitely, you know, gets a little bit of chatter through the rear end. But overall, it's still a pretty comfortable riding truck. And I will say that the steering stands out to me a little bit on the Nissan. You know, it's really nicely weighted. I like the weight on the wheel more so than some of the other trucks here. Now, moving on, we of course have the Ram Limited back there. Now, our Ram has the air suspension and, and riding empty just like riding loaded it's a really nice ride hitting those big potholes at full speed there's almost no chatter that comes through the truck there's no real hard hit the air suspension feels like it really absorbs those things well and you know it feels like it's never ending it definitely doesn't feel like you could bottom that truck out when you hit stuff hard and then we have the chevy silverado over here and the Silverado is actually one of the stiffer feeling trucks here to my butt anyways, uh, hitting some of those potholes out there, especially kind of mid corner. The truck does like to step out on you.
just came in from our first payload loops. Now each one of those barrels is 500 pounds, so we're doing 1,000 pounds in each truck. And again, I'm just gonna give you the quick hits. So this is the Ram 1500 Limited right here. Now this truck has the air suspension, and that really pronounces itself. And it's a nice, soft, smooth ride, but through the corners, it almost feels a little loose because of that air suspension. So you get the nice ride, but you don't get sort of that tight handling that you might want. Now, moving on, we have the Nissan Titan here, and that was actually maybe one of the best ones out of this group, I thought. You know, it rode really smooth, really comfortable, not a lot of chatter through the bumps, uh, and just felt, you know, really solid and really confident. You know, I, I don't really have any bad things to say about this Nissan with the weight in the back. And when it's empty, this truck is a little stiff. With a thousand pounds, it rides really, really nice. And then finally, we have the Silverado here. Now, the Silverado, was a little too stiff with the weight. Honestly, I expected it to be a little smoother, hitting the potholes, coming through the corners. The back end still feels kind of stiff, sort of jittery. It definitely got more out of sorts than any of these three trucks. So, you know, I was a little surprised, and I hate to say it, but out of these three, the Silverado was actually sort of the worst with the payload in it. If there's one feature on one truck that stands out to you, is there anything that jumps to the top of your mind that's really, you've been really digging? Uh, well, not so much a capability thing, but that big screen in the RAM would probably be the one feature that really uh, hits you in the face. <laughs> And now we're back from our final set of payload loops. So we'll start on this end with the GMC Sierra behind me here. This is a Denali with the 6.2 liter V8. And I have to say, I think it's the best feeling truck out of all of these with this payload. It was smooth when it was empty and it was equally as smooth with the payload. It really felt planted to the ground. It seemed to soak up the potholes well. Um, I, I think ride wise, this truck has the rest beat. Now, next up, we got the Toyota TRD Pro here. Now, I can even show you, this is easily the squattiest of the bunch, and that's to be expected. You know, it is an off-road truck. It does get those extra shocks, so it's supposed to have soft suspension. Now, what's surprising about it is the squat actually looks a lot worse than it feels. It doesn't really feel that like loose and squirrely like I thought, but when you're going through corners, you're still really leaning side to side. When you hit the gas, you kind of get that back feeling. So unlike the rest of the trucks here, it just kind of feels, you know, not very confident. You don't want to go too fast through stuff. Everything else here feels a lot more solid than the TRD Pro does with a thousand pounds. And then finally, we have this F-150 diesel. And I'll say first about this F-150, um, the diesel has not the best low end torque. Right off the line, it's not quite there, but the mid range, two shifts in, this thing just takes off and feels powerful. And then when it comes to ride and handling, um, the F-150, empty, quite smooth, and payload is pretty much the same and actually gets a little bit smoother. And it's, it's really tough, you know, this is a battle of inches here, but in terms of just overall ride quality, this one's just a tick under the GMC in my books. So we run the loops, we come back here, we stop, we switch drivers, and then keep going. So we do have five judges this year, five judges, six trucks. So all of these trucks do this loop, exact same loop, five times back to back. And that's how we gather the information for our fuel economy study. So the fuel economy study, uh, we actually use data readers. So the data reader goes right into the OBD2 port and it pulls its information directly from the ECU on this truck. So that's how we're able to get such good fuel economy numbers for each different situation. We run them empty, loaded, with payload and towing, and we're able to get a fuel economy number from each one because we come out here and do the loops as you know one big group. The trucks come out, run the loops five times, then they go back, and we're able to take the fuel economy just from those runs. So a few things to note about this fuel economy chart. First of all, the Silverado is highlighted because it was the most efficient truck when you look at the comparable average. But if you look at the empty loops and the payloaded loops, the GMC Sierra with the same 6.2 liter V8 actually managed to be slightly more efficient than the Silverado. If you're looking at efficiency order, the Silverado is first, followed by the Sierra, then you have the Toyota Tundra, the Ram 1500, and finally the Nissan Titan. And by now you've noticed that the numbers for the Ford F-150 diesel are absent. Well, that's just because the data recorder and the F-150 just didn't like to communicate, so we didn't get a reliable set of fuel numbers from the Ford. 
It is regrettable, but hey, technology just doesn't always work for you. And for the US folks, here it all is again in miles per gallon. Okay, day two of the Canadian Trucking Challenge is just getting started, and as you can see behind me, we're doing trailering today. So that is a 7,000 pound trailer. Now we're gonna do all six trucks with the 7,000 pounds. Right now we've got the Ram hooked up, and back there behind it, we've got the Silverado. So let's hit the road and see how these things tow. This Silverado, the 6.2, no issue. A, the 6.2 sounds really, really good. It's got lots of power, lots of low end power, and the 10 speed fires off really quick shifts. Now the pronounced difference here was the Silverado a little bit stiff with the trailer, a little bit busy. You definitely feel a lot more of the road coming through. And then we've got the Ram 1500 here. So this Ram with the air suspension is just super smooth in all situations. And with the 7,000 pounds on, the nicest thing is the back end lifts itself up because this truck is automatically load leveling. So it stays nice and flat and it feels that way. It feels really confident. And then best of all, the suspension, soaks up the road. So unlike the Chevy, which is really busy feeling, this Ram just feels smooth and that is absolutely confidence inspiring. If I said, you know, what's the coolest thing you've seen so far on this group of trucks, is there one thing that, that jumps to the top of your mind? I've been really impressed with that, uh, with the new Ford diesel. Um, we, we, we drove it yesterday with, with, with load on it and it, it was fine. Uh, drove it empty and it was fine. I was really looking forward to today and dropping 7,000 pounds in the back of it. And I was really impressed with how it responded. Felt very stable as far as the, the truck itself. The engine did a fine job, which I was a little surprised at. But uh, yeah, it, that was probably one of the, the surprises of the event. I, I, I've been looking forward to it and uh, those expectations have been fulfilled. Perfect, thank you sir. Okay, we're back in from trailering with the second group now. That was the TRD Pro and the Titan. And just the quick hits on those trucks. So just like with the payload, the TRD Pro here actually looked a lot worse than it felt. It was easily squatting the most out of the bunch. The front end was a little bit light. You know, it was kind of looking up a tiny bit, but overall it actually felt pretty decent. The suspension was still soaking stuff up nice. So over the potholes, it actually felt kind of smooth. But the issue, just like always with the TRD Pro for towing or payload, is through the corners, you're really leaning, it feels kind of loose, just, you know, there's not that much confidence when you're towing with this truck. The 5.7 though, tons of power. Power, certainly not an issue. And then over here, we have the Titan. So this is the Titan Pro 4X. The 5.7 and the seven speed, we're just okay. Still enough power to get moving, but you know, the other engines here feel a little more authoritative than what's in this Titan. Okay, we're back from our final towing loop, and right here we have the GMC Sierra. So let me say, first of all, that the difference between the Sierra, this Denali anyways, and our Silverado LTZ is definitely pronounced. The suspension here in the Sierra, the active suspension that GMC uses, it's really, really smooth. It's, it's actually really impressive, that empty payload or trailering, this GMC, I think is the smoothest truck in this entire competition. The Ram is really, really close. The difference is so minute. But both this GMC and the Ram, they just eat up the ground really well. Through the potholes, everything stays nice and flat and level. Um, yeah, you know, I can't say really enough about the ride and the handling on this GMC. Now the 6.2 liter V8, really strong, really good down low, lots of great torque. And the 10 speed here just bangs off shifts. They feel really good. With 7,000 pounds on it, this GMC just felt like it wasn't working all that hard and it felt entirely confident. Now, we also just came back with this one, the F-150 diesel, and I have to say, it's a little disappointing. With 7,000 pounds, we hit the highway, you put your foot into it, and the low end, you know, the first, you know, climbing through the first two gears, the torque just isn't really there. It doesn't really come on like these big gas engines do. Of course, I, I understand the horsepower is really lacking compared to these ones, but it's a diesel. You want that punch of torque right away, and this one doesn't really deliver that.
And now the moment you've really been waiting for, let's see which truck is the winner. So in sixth position, with a score of 71 out of 100 possible points, we have the Toyota Tundra, TRD Pro. Coming in fifth with a score of 71.3, just edging out that Toyota, we have the Nissan Titan. In fourth place with a score of 73.3, we are looking at the Ford F-150 with the Power Stroke Diesel. In third place, with a score of 77.3, we have the first of the two GM twins, the Chevy Silverado. And in second place, and this is going to give it away, we have the Ram Limited with a score of 78.8, which means that the winner of the 2019 Canadian Truck King Challenge is the GMC Sierra Denali with a final score of 80 out of a possible 100 points. Congratulations go out to the GMC team and for all you TFL truck viewers make sure you stay tuned to the channel as our gold hitch testing continues. We have plenty of Ike Gauntlet tests coming your way along with more fuel economy challenges so come back here to the channel as always because we're going to bring you the latest news views and real world reviews. See ya.